Welcome to another beautiful time on CAC television. Uh, I'm here live and it's the program Church and Politics. Uh, last week we had the meeting edition of Church and Politics and my guest last week was uh, a director, executive director for Center for Rights and Grassroots Initiative. Uh, before I full, give you the full details of him, uh, last week we talked about um, how church can influence politics and how politics can influence church, uh, the recommendations as per who should be in politics and who is not supposed to be in politics. We had quite a beautiful time in the program and today we'll be taking it further. And after this quick break, I will do a proper introduction of my guest and we'll get in the program for the day. Don't go away. <laughs> Welcome back. Yeah, uh, it's still your program, our program on CAC television, uh, church and politics. The church is uh, a big home for all and if you look at it very well, you discover that it is the church that even made the politics because politics is uh, enveloped with human resources and the most populated part, you know, congregational you know, place in the world, I think, is the church. And this had always been, uh, they have been working at par with politics. So uh, I already bring our, our fluent and quite a beautiful uh, loaded person. He's a social analyst, he's a political, political analyst, he's also uh, the executive director for Center for Rights and Grassroots Initiative. That is Mr. Nelson Kujumi. Good to have you on the program, sir. Good day. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Yeah, so uh, today we'll be looking at politics from benefits uh, perspective. Like how, you know, what are the benefits I would enjoy if I join probably a party or if I engage in politics? What do I stand to gain? Yes, thank you very much. You, as a citizen, you stand to gain quite a lot. Because like you and I know very well, politics is about the allocation of resources. Who gets what, when, and how. And when we are talking about allocation of resources, we are not talking about the 
personal allocation of resources. Rather, we are talking about the allocation of communal resources. That is what belongs to us all. What the, whatever we have all contributed to, to make for the smooth running of the state. So as a citizen, it is a very, very important for you to be involved in politics, either as an active participant or as a voter. And what do I mean by this? By the time you participate in politics, you'll be able to determine the good from the bad. You'll be able to make a choice, an informed choice, about maybe a political party or a candidate that, look, this candidate has enunciated his programs. These programs that Mr. A or Ms. B or Mrs. Z has enunciated, these are programs that will benefit the society in the long run. And how do we mean benefiting the societies? Is it in the provision of infrastructures? Is it in the provision of jobs? Because you and I know very well that as a human being, you have to work to earn a living. Yeah. Is it in the provision of the uh, enabling environment for business to thrive? Is it in the provision of security? Is it in the provision of health facility? Is it in the provision of you know, uh, welfare packages for the aged? So is it in the provision of social benefit? So the benefits that is derivable from participating in politics are very, very numerous. And that is why no responsible citizen should stay on the sideline and watch things, you know, uh, things become messy. Because whether you like it or not, whoever gets into political office to allocate resources, if you are not involved, whatever policies that person or party or government shuns at, at the end of the day, whether you like it or not, you are bound by that policy mm -hmm. because you are a member of that society. If you stay at Kimbo and allow the bad people to get into governance, it will, the bad people to take part in politics, definitely you and I know that, like our Lord Jesus Christ said, a bad tree cannot bring forth a good mm -hmm. fruit. So you'll, be, you'll, be, you, you'll, be, you, you'll become somebody who has the uh, benefit of taking the bad apple that ever comes from the bad tree. But if you are involved in politics, knowing the benefits that, look, politics is about how to make life better for the average citizen. It's about the amelioration of the human condition. Because life is about challenges. So your participating in politics will make you enjoy those quality and you know, good benefits. But if you decide not to, if you're unlucky, you are living in an environment where uh, people of your own kind of mentality are in the majority. Then whoever gets there, because you have not you know, contributed your own input to determine who gets there, whatever comes out of that uh, food that is being cooked, then you have to eat from it. But if you have taken part, just like uh, there's this uh, Igbo proverb that uh, when a lion is being killed, it is imperative of you to be there. So that when they are portioning the parts, you take a good portion. You don't wait until they have uh, finished cooking, the, uh, they have finished slaughtering the ram, then you come. What you will be left with will, they, will be the bones that is being thrown that ordinarily should go to the dogs. Hmm. But as a woman being, if you were there, yeah. then you tell them, ah, ah, this lion, I was there when we killed it. So this is what I want. Yeah. <laughs> that that's a good one. Well, um, for me, I was thinking um, that the understanding uh, people have, or people generally has about politics, you know, going to politics is, is this going on benefits now. Like, oh, I tend to meet the Godfathers; the appointments will flow down to me. And if you look at that, I think the, 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 there are hierarchies. Going by party level now, there are hierarchies and there are slots, you know, portions. I think it is your work that determines what you get. So, so how, how do we, you know, expose people intellectually that, come on, you are going into politics. That doesn't mean that you get there and start fighting for commissioner or going there to fight for essay and, you know, counselorship or blah, blah, blah. So how do we? No, I think the message, the message we should send them to our people is that for some time now we have had this uh, warped mindset that politics is about what do I get. No. Okay. Politics should be about what do we get. 
Because it will not be about what you are gaining as an enemy. It's about the government or the party getting into power and putting out policies that will make life meaningful, that will make life affordable, that will ensure quality life. Or if a government gets into power tomorrow and says, look, we're offering free quality education from primary to secondary. It won't be only the children of the party members. Every member of that society benefits. Mm -hmm. But we have developed this mindset that, oh, where politics is about, oh, let me go and join this party. So when we're having a meeting, how much are they sharing for me? It should not be like that. Or on election day. Unfortunately, that has been the norm in our society for some time now on election days, where voters go to the polling stations and they are looking for party agents who will induce them with monetary things, who will induce them with other uh, souvenirs. You should be about, oh, I'm going there. For the next four years, I'm going to vote for candidate A because candidate A has promised that in the next three years, we are going to have improved power distribution from 4,000 megawatts to 8,000 megawatts. In that way, if we, the state is providing us 10 hours electricity per day yeah. in our community, the man who is coming into office has said, look, when we increase the generation and distribution from 4,000 megawatts to 8,000, then instead of me giving you 10 hours a day, I'll be providing you 20 hours a day. So when a government provides you electricity 20 hours a day, definitely you and I know that the, that government will be alleviating poverty. Because you know why? The amount of money a lot of us expend in providing private power supply through our generators, you can't quantify it. Yeah. There was a day I was telling somebody that if I look at how much I've spent in buying petrol in my generator, honestly, I should be buying new cars if I do a rough estimate. Wow. Because I'm somebody who wants to be abreast with developments in the polity. So every now and then, I must make sure my electronic gadgets are oh, charged. Right. And how do I charge them? It is when I provide electricity. Because a lot of times, even in some communities as we speak here, they are not yet connected to the national grid. So you, can rea you, you realize that such people are living in the Stone Age. Even those of us in the cities, in some environments in the cities, people are, spent, they are using maybe four hours a day. Then in some communities, it is one day on, one day off because of uh, epileptic uh, power supply. So it should be about what do we get? It is not, politics should not be about I, because it's about allocation of state resources. State resources must not be allocated to an individual. State resources must be allocated in a way that will benefit the generality of the people. If the government constructs a road, if the government provides quality medical health care, it is for everybody. I won't be the only one who, that will say, oh, uh, because I voted for party A and party A is in office, you, 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 you voted for party B, you cannot benefit. No. It is, politics should be about what do we benefit as a people, not what do I. But unfortunately, that has been the mindset of a lot of our people. And that is one area that we need to continuously sensitize our people that look when you go to police station on election day don't go because of what you get for that day because whatever you get for that day ends on that day be concerned that on the election day you are going to turn print for a four-year mandate four years of your life you have signed it so you must be conscious that you are signing it for a good cause rather than for what you eat immediately so it is important for us to continuously educate our people about, you know, uh, this uh, line of thinking. Good, 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 sir. Well, well um, uh, going from, you know, the opposite of what you are saying is what we'll be looking at now. And that includes the woes one must look out for in politics. How much would you rate them? And what woes that one must at least prevent is or is, is herself from, you know. Well, we, we live in a developing or underdeveloped society. Okay. And you and I know very well that, uh, like I used to tell uh, some of my friends, you know, when we're having private chats, I tell them that, look, I was brought up in another other society. I remember when I was growing up in this society. This was a society in which even before the law catches up with you, within our own small gathering. 
Yes. There are disciplinary measures we meet out to one another. And those disciplinary measures uh, cautions you, forbids you from taking some actions. For example, I, as I'm sitting down here today, I'm a parent. I did my secondary, primary, my primary, uh, primary, secondary and university education in this, in the, at a time past in this country. You dare, as a student, you dare not cheat in an examination. Mm -hmm. Because if you cheat, your peers, they will ostracize you. Mm -hmm. Because we'll ask you, how can you cheat? Our parents have sent us to school. What are you using your head for? What are you thinking? But unfortunately, I'm studying that today, I'm afraid the type of society we are living in, and I'm afraid about the type of society we are going to bequeath to our children. This is the same society that if somebody, I said it the other time, if somebody comes into sudden wealth, as you are here now, as I'm here, that I've not done any big, I've not won any contract, I've not uh, worked for years, I've not inherited fortune from my, maybe my grandparents, and all of a sudden you see me riding a car of 10 million. Even if you ride a car of uh, 1 million, the society will first of all run away. It will be as if when one sees the lion mm -hmm. in the forest, you first of all take off. Ah! The society we ask, but well, we live in a society today where people don't ask questions. Hmm. Where people believe, oh, it is, that is why we are living our life today as if we are playing lottery. People don't subject their, ex, their existence to rigorous analysis. Why am I on this earth? Is it just like Jesus said, our Lord Jesus Christ said that man shall not live by bed alone. Am I in this world to come and eat, drink and make merry or to leave my footprints in the sand of time? Those are basic questions we should be asking ourselves. I recognize that in our political climate today, there are several pitfalls. And the pitfalls, you cannot exonerate all of us from it. Just like the Bible said, we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Either by commission, by error of commission or omission, we have all contributed to the state we are in today. Whereby, in the time past, I, I, I still remember, not even in the Second Republic, whereby when candidates, come, when candidates offer themselves for political position, you'll be assessed on the basis of your intellect. In fact, in some of those parties, we are told, because we were very young there, we couldn't, you know, mm -hmm. become members of the party. We were told that candidates or um, aspirants will be given papers and biro and be told to enunciate why you want to run for this office. What do you wow. have to offer? Wow. But today, sadly, it is no longer about what you have to offer. It is about how big is your pocket. And the society is also copied because society does, somebody will just come from the moon and say, I want to run for governor. And everybody, just because the man has a lot of money to try, everybody is going after him. No. We should be, where are you coming from? What have you done? What is, what is your past? We should check there. That we should do a Bad forensic <laughs> check of candidates. Oh, this man wants to become the local government chairman. Yes. Who is he? What has he done before? Where is he coming from? What is his educational pedigree? Is he, is he a responsible member of the society? You know, these are basic questions, but unfortunately, we live in a society where anything goes, like I said. So the pitfalls we are talking about, we are also responsible because on election day or on party campaign days, we are waiting for what to get. I remember my father told me that in those days, party members contribute to fund parties. But today, everybody, we join a political party either because I want to be collecting a mudu of rice whenever they are sharing it, or maybe they are going to share Ankara, <laughs> or on election day, they will give us money. Yeah. But in those days, people were contributing. Oh, this is our party. We have brought out Mr. X. For Mr. For a party to emerge successfully at the post, we need money to, for campaigns because definitely, you know, when you, the parties are involved in campaigns, you print posters. Posters cost money. Yeah. You go on TV station to talk. The airtime must be paid for. Yeah. You buy. You print souvenirs yes. to propagate what your party is about. You print manifesto, yes. booklets. You pay the printer. So those are the things 
the party was coming. But today we look for a party where we already have a money bag. And later we'll be complaining that there's one godfather who is it. Why won't he, like our people say, he who pays the paper dictates it. How can somebody be funding a party and you are not contributing anything, but rather you want to get out of it and you are complaining that that man or woman is dictating what goes? You can only have a voice if your fund is also involved. So the pitfalls in our political party is that we live in a society whereby we are not being ruled by ideas. Mm -hmm. Societies that make progress are societies that are ruled by, we are being ruled by a pocket. Our society now tries by materialism rather than idealism. Because it is ideas that move society forward. It is ideas that bring about innovations, that bring about inventions. Oh, remember in the time past, as a journalist, when I write articles or press statements, I go from one TV and radio station to the other. For example, let me tell you. Well, under this organization, when I write press statements on national issues, I first of all go to Kirikiri. You know what? We have Vanguard newspaper. Okay. From Vanguard newspaper, I will come to uh, Five Star, where we have Guardian. Mm -hmm. From Guardian, I will come to the back of Guardian at Maturi, where we have the nation. And copy them too? I'll give them, no, I'll give them the hard copy. copy yeah. I'll come to Punch at Onipetesi. That's the Lezik. I'll drop. I'll go to LTV at Obafem Aloway. Within that, that exists, you have the news. Mm -hmm. You have PM News. You have Daily Independent. I'll give them hard copies. But because of the innovation, because of the idealism of some people, now I sit down on the, uh, on the spot. And I disseminate. disseminate all these messages through, is it WhatsApp? Is it email? Is it Facebook? So that is how society, look at, uh, look at the stress that has been taken off me. Look at the danger I face moving from that. Uh, I could have been knocked down in yeah. an accident. I could develop any ailment. But now you can even, uh, no matter your state of health, through the internet, now, what I was doing manually, physically, laboriously, now I can do it without any stress. That is how to move a society forward, not like what we, we are doing. That is, those are the pitfalls of our politics that you know, we should continuously engage ourselves in such a way that we'll be asking critical questions. Our roads, why are they like this? When you construct a road, Mr. Commissioner, Mr. Local Government Chairman, there's nothing in life that does not have wear and tear. Even we as human beings, we yes. have an expiry date. Yes, we do. That you have built this road for us. What is the cost? What is the lifespan? Mm -hmm. Nobody's asking. Hmm. So those are the pitfalls of our party, party politics. Because when we go into joining political parties, we are not going there because we want to ask questions that will move the society. Rather, we are going there because of what we start. Oh. If I join that party, maybe in the next five years, I can aspire to be a local government chairman. Hmm. So when we are talking about the pitfalls, we are also creators of those pitfalls, those woes we have mentioned. Wow. Sorry to cut you, sir. <laughs> Let's go on a quick break, and when we come back, we'll take it further from where we stop. <laughs> Welcome back. I um, have a quite an interesting moment on the platform uh, with our uh, guest, Mr. Nese Kujumi. And our discussion, if you are just joining us, our discussion has centered on how powerful politics can be and how powerless an individual can be when you fail to participate in politics. So our discussion today has been on participation. And we are taking it further um, right now. Uh, please, Mr. Nelson, I would like you to tell us because it is us now. <laughs> I think I will be a politician soon. So tell me, what are the requirements to be a politician? Well, I, I think politician, politics should be a vocation, should not be a job. You should have your okay. means of livelihood. Politics is about service, service to humanity. And if you want to participate in politics under our laws, 
you must be above 16 years of age. You must have attained voting age. Okay. Also, you must not be somebody who has a mental uh, history. You know, uh, somebody who, who is supposed to be in the psychiatric uh, uh, institution cannot participate in politics because, you know, politics is about giving your productive ability. And, you know, somebody who has a medical condition cannot give, you know, his best to any society. Also, you must not have been declared uh, uh, a criminal. You must not have a criminal history, mm -hmm. you know. So once you don't have any of that, you are free to participate in politics either as a member of a political party or as an active voter on election day, analyzing candidates and their parties. So being a politician does not uh, require any special qualification. It's a right that you have under the Constitution of Nigeria. But even as at that right, there are still some limitations to those rights. And those, some of those limitations are what I've just uh, highlighted right now, that you must have attained voting age. You must not, be, you must not have a mental condition. Then you must not have a you know, criminal history. Somebody who is in prison today uh, under our constitution cannot vote because we don't conduct elections for people who are in prison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's take another quick one. You see, there is a saying that politics is a place where half truth dominates. And there is also an extension, a, a plan B, <laughs> or the this part of it that uh, politi in politics, uh, you, are, you don't have permanent friends and you don't have permanent enemies. So, so, so on that, that note, I want to ask, who should be your friend, who should be your mentor? Well, the people you should uh, share political beliefs with in your are people who share the political ideology of that party. Uh, unfortunately, when people, a lot of times people have said parties do not have ideology. And the question I ask them that even the individual members, what is their own ideology? Because as an individual, you need to have your own ideology about life before you join a political party. It is, the, it is the conglomeration or aggregation of our various individual beliefs that becomes the ideology of the party. Oh, our party, if we get into office today, we want to operate a communist manifesto, a welfareist manifesto that, oh, we must make sure the resources of the state is used for the greatest benefit of the mass majority of the people. So if you have that mindset, then you can team up in a political party that believes in that ideology. Not you joining, not you having a political ideology that is at variance with a political party that you want. A political party that believes that, oh, every, every institution of state must be privatized for profit making. Definitely you know that such an ideology does not tally with your welfareist ideology. Yeah. Your, your welfareist ideology now is such that you come into a political party and you are looking at the manifesto or the ideology of the party and you see that, oh, this, you value education. This party has said there will be free education from primary to university education. And if there's a political party that says education is expensive, government cannot fund it, therefore it will be privatized. Definitely you know such party, you cannot belong to such a party. Yeah. That this is a party for you because party has various ideologies. There's always a party that will meet your uh, individual ideology. And also talking about mentorship, it's unfortunate that in our society today, looking for a mentor, uh, it's easier for the camel to pass through the eye of the needle. Hmm. Because I remember vividly when we were growing up, your first mentor in life is your father because your family is your first point of contact with you know civilized with socialization yeah. <clears throat> so it is the way your father lives his life that you want to follow his, his footsteps but today the family has failed and that is why there's crisis in the society the society is made up of families if the family is up and doing a lot of the problems we have in society today will be, will be minimized. If we have taught our children good values, yeah. your children won't go out there and become arm robber. But because the family has failed in its responsibility, 
That is why mentorship, even somebody that has failed to mentor his children, is it that person that will go and mentor in a political party? It's not, you can't give what you don't have. Hmm. So the issue of mentorship depends on the individual. You need as an individual, if you are going to join, you have to identify people, not necessarily people in your political party. It could be people in other spheres of life. Okay. Like I remember when I was growing up, I always admired uh, one sh late chief, Molade Okoya Thomas because he was an industrial. I saw him as somebody who, was, who had great intel intellect, great character. And you know, I saw him as somebody who was very uh, focused. So those are men, you can take mentorship from one aspect of life and bring it into politics. In that way, you'll be making a change. So because the family has failed, like I said, looking for mentorship these days in our society, it's very difficult because the elders, the elderly ones, what I used to do, a lot of times they will tell you that, oh, the young ones are filled. And I tell them that, look, we the young ones, we are copying you. If we are filled, it's a reflection of your failure. Of your failure. Mm -hmm. But we only pray that we don't pass it down the ladder. Wow. That's deep. <laughs> we won't live here today if we are to exhaust that. So uh, let's take a very, uh, the last, uh, not least, uh, what would you call the retirement age for politics? Today, as we sit here, the democratic uh, candidate of the the democratic candidate of uh, the candidate of the Democratic Party, sorry, in the U.S. today, Joe Biden, yes, is seventy-seven years old. Wow, wow, wow. When the elections will be taking place in November, it will be seventy-eight. So I don't know which age will be the retirement age for a politician. So long as, I believe that for politics, so long as you are in good health and your mental capacity has not been hampered by age, I believe you can still control your best. Because like the Yoruba say, Omodegbon, Agbagbon, like we die leave So when we, when we are looking for the, uh, the youthfulness, of the young ones, the wisdom of the elders cannot be brushed aside. We need it. So long as we find an elder who has contributed progressively to the society in the past, and even in his old age, he can be, he can still, be, he can still be a reservoir of knowledge. Because you know, our people say, uh, when a young man is cutting a tree in the forest. It is the elders that knows the direction At because of wisdom. So we need the elders. Wow. Thank you for your knowledge. Thank you for your time. Thank you for everything you have bring to the program today, Mr. Nese Kujumi. Uh, God bless you, sir. To God be the glory. Um, our, our people out there, thank you for joining. Thank you for staying tuned. We have come to the end of the program. But in the end of today's program, I think in my own little way, I think I've learned that Politics, Nigerian politics, what it is today because some of us have not participated. And that is that means there is room for you, there is room for me to impact some godly characters and to join and make impact. Let's do it like Daniel, let's do it like David, and let's change uh, the, the, you know, the, re the battered economy, the battered roads, the bad educational system. Everything that we think is bad to us as individuals needs our attention, and not just by condemnation, by participation. And that's where we can make the change we desire to see in Nigeria of our today. Uh, my name is T. Dapo Oloruto, and bye-bye for now. <laughs>
And I want us to strike a balance uh, between the church and the policy at hand. And if I may have, I want you to tell us what is the place or the position of the church in the politics of the internet. While we're growing up, we need to be told that the politics is the best way. And uh, as we grew older, uh, we found that statement very statesman. He says that if you say politics is the best way, there is no need to see it. I mean, tidies it up. For me, I think the time has come for the uh, Christian community we actively involved in the politics of this country. In the likes of you know, China, you know, developing countries, you know, when I look at the, the developed countries, I, when I look at the, 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 the how come these people are, you know, making ways and the praying nations like Nigeria is behind? Is it that the church is not participating in politics?